Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, Good morning. How are you doing? This uh, this is Wednesday now, the middle of May. Uh, wow. Crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, I think we're getting close to, if not, we'll have to, we'll have to look it up and see. Uh, I think we had our annual, our, our one year. Our, our first episode was sometime in May, right? Yeah, it was in May. So probably the middle, May middle of, of May. May so. of 21. So yeah. We, yeah, we need to look it up and see when it was because we're coming up on it if we're not there already. And we're having a good time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and hopefully everybody's enjoying the little shorter format um, that fits better in a commute and things like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, in today's age, uh, uh, we can only handle so much, right? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. uh, absolutely. Now, now you and I, and, and particularly uh, <laughs> for me, because I'm so, I get so excited about <laughs> just being in the Word and expressing the truth of the Word. And to me, it's right. just... It's always fun because it's just wow! Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> literally, I I could go all day long and never even stop. I mean, you know. Like, and I can attest to that yeah. because when you're at retreats with Rich, you see that. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Remember, everybody needs a bathroom. Break. Yeah. Hey, they need a break. They need a break. Ah, come on, you know. Uh, so we have fun with it. We hope that we hope people do. And um, the for- I think Absolutely. shorter format is a good good uh, tweak. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, when you look at God's will and, and how he de- develops it, in a sense, you know, you and I would say, well, <laughs> with the shorter format, why didn't you tell us that earlier? <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, he said, well, you know, I wanted you to, you know, get into a, a depth of it. Um, and then once you're in the depth of it and we learned how to do it, now you can shorten right. it because actually we can do the shorter version better. Right. Uh, I think now than we would have done if we had done it up front. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I agree. Uh, he knows what he's talking about, so uh, yeah. it's fun. Um, we've been talking about uh, the covenant and uh, the the right now the uh, the aspect of obedience. Um, I just had a conversation this morning uh, with uh, actually it was on the on our discipling call with Ken uh, Blanchard and his group, oh, and uh, and we were talking about this aspect of uh, their their question was around. Um, how come uh, Christians tend to go to law? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, under I should, I should, I should. First of all, they said law for yourself. Right. You tend to speak your shoulds to yourself, um, and then to others, and then you, <laughs> then yeah. you e- easily lay that on others, uh, and try to divide the world into Are you going to do what I think you should do? Uh, and if you do that, you know, you'll, you'll uh, achieve it. Now, by the way, and this is really interesting, um, every other, I'm talking every other religion in the world is all about the should. I mean, think about that. Um, if, yeah. if you're the going to... The list of requirements are incredible. If yes. you're going to get to whatever level they say, you should and live and operate this way, and it's up to you. Um, and they provide the rules. Now, and, and to me, I've always been interested in this, that <laughs> how are they so attractive to people? Uh, right. That people actually, and I think it's ba- built in the nature of the self, uh-huh. interesting enough, they actually like the definition. Yeah, okay, I tell, think it gives a sense of control. Control. I, I can then control my fate. It's all about control, and the, bur- mm-hmm. the burden is on me. And if, if, if. Uh, and they said, why do Christians go that way? And, uh, and so we went into Galatians, uh, and we talked about um, the difference between the flesh and the spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, that the flesh automatically goes to law. Right. But the, the spirit goes to freedom. 
because mm-hmm. uh, it's the joy of walking with him. So as we, as we consider that, we actually talked a little bit about this this morning. Um, the question is, okay, where does the role of obedience play in that process? Because isn't, right. isn't obedience really performing to the should in order to? Uh, particularly as we've set it up that to receive the the blessing of the covenant right and we, seeing these if then statements we yeah have, we have to be obedient um mm-hmm. so isn't that kind of defining that we're we're in that same place so we have to follow a set of rules to get to the blessing um and it isn't obedience really about that and uh, as we've tried to understand it and i described it this morning is uh, let's go back to the purity of, of the statement where the spirit of the Lord is there's freedom uh, he says when you walk in the spirit you are experiencing freedom uh, and he, he says uh, do not and this is really interesting do not use your freedom to then uh, let the flesh take over and start operating with law right uh, and he said, as soon as you do, then you, you fall back under law, correct? Yeah, you fall back under yeah. law. And what you've done is that you have walked away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by definition, so it's kind of simple. Obedience is involved with, with the joy of freedom. Right. Okay, now think about why. When he says, well, I need you to be obedient. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. He said, no, I didn't say that. (laughs) I said, be obedient. Um, How does that relate? How can I be obedient and free at the same time? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, Yeah. so as you you think about that, it's it's an interesting conundrum Mm -hmm. that in our mind, (laughs) I don't see how that's going to work. Right. Uh, Because if I'm obedient, which means I have to perform to something to be obedient to, then isn't that uh, a duty and an obligation? And and isn't that going to be burdensome, you know, to fulfill it? Particularly appears that God's request for obedience seem difficult to do. Uh, Right. Yes. And the answer to that is (laughs) yes. Uh, However... Uh, that's the whole point of obedience is, um, and, and look at it differently. Uh, who are you with? You're with him. Okay, who's inside of you? The Holy Spirit. Him. Uh, so he says, um, why am I asking you to be obedient? And again, think of the, the broadness of that is that, uh, and, and this is what you said, the key word, which is our struggle with this. It's not to control us. That's what we think. Well, if I'm obedient, then that means actually it's proving that I'm willing to go under that control. Mm -hmm. And he says, this isn't about control, it's about freedom. What what does that mean? (laughs) He said, said, um, obedience is for you, children, to walk with me into the place that I can deliver the covenant. And and it's based on truth. Because I can't violate the truth. Now, what is the truth? It's It's the way that life was always intended to be, to deliver the beautiful, fantastic, exceptional life that Adam and Eve had before the fall. Uh, and he said it's all based on all based on truth. And he said I can't violate that truth. So, like, like for example, um, he says, uh, uh, for you to walk with me and for me to bless you, I am asking you to be obedient to tithing the income I give you. Right. To control us? No. Uh, it's because that says to me, children, that if you take a portion of what I'm giving you, you understand something. <laughs> I'm the one giving it to you. Right. It's a heart issue. It's a heart certainly. issue. It's not you earning it. It's me giving it to you. I'm your provider. And you are saying to me, I, I receive that 
and I understand who you are, I would love to give back to your work. And remember, this is really cool. Uh, when you when you tithe, for example, well, who do you give to? The church, typically, yeah. The church, uh, the organizations uh, that you know, we get we get people that donate to our ministry because we're we're having fruit. Uh, well, what happens is that God <laughs> God multiplies it uh, into His work of what glorifying Himself and inviting people to live out the covenant life. Right. Um, and He said, so it's it's not, you know, that I'm taking it. Uh, he said. <laughs> He said, I don't need it. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, it's demonstrating uh, that you trust me, that you understand I'm the source of blessing. And out of that is the fulfillment of all the opportunity for others to receive and give it away. And by the way, right. he asked us, even in our organization, well, the, the income you get, tithe it. Demonstrate the same principle right? Uh, that we trusted. Okay, now... Is that out of control? No, no, that is out of him seeing actually what what tends to fight for our heart the most and him inviting us into the work he's doing. Yeah. Uh, and it's based on truth that if you do this uh, willingly, mm -hmm. you see, oh, how fantastic is this? Um, and that's why he even states it is that um, I even don't want you to give out a duty. I want you to give out of a heart of love and liberty and the joy of knowing that I'm going to bless you. And by the way, he says, you can test me in this. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a second when you talk about, because I think tithing is a really good one to have this conversation on. There are times, I believe. So when I look back at, you know, when I'm first learning tithing as, as a you know, young adult, broke as can be and, and really, you know, but I'm hearing this and you could take that and you could say, well, my heart's not fully there yet, so I'm not gonna do it because I'm not doing it out of a pure heart. Or the posture that, that we took with it is, you know what, our heart really isn't. I'm, I'm gonna say, this is a struggle right now. My heart's not fully there, but I trust your word. And so I'm stepping in obedience to do this and God form my heart to align with yours so that I can give it out of a pure heart. Right. And so there was, for me anyway, there was a process there where I actually took a step of obedience before my heart aligned with it out of trusting him, but not really being ready heart wise to do it. Okay. Um, on what so, on you want to talk basis? through that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. On what basis did you trust him? just knowing who he was, his character, trusting, wanting, wanting to be with him, wanting to honor what he says out of love for him. Okay. Um, but and, it was still scary for him. And when did you understand, well, you know, uh, we're called to tithe. On what basis did you receive that? His word. It was spoken. He okay. said it. It was, you know, alerted. It's in his word. it was alerted to you mm -hmm. that uh, my word says, I say. Right. Uh, okay. Um, this is how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. is that um, as and remember when you tied for example did you have 20 other things that you were you were called to do no you know it was hey honey uh, this is something right now I'm ready I'm, to grow you I'm in asking this. you to understand mm -hmm. okay uh, I get in the word oh it says tithing uh, and here's why okay uh, you said <laughs> uh, that ain't that easy. <laughs> uh, particularly, by the way, when uh, when you're looking at your financial condition, right? And um, uh, and it's I can't tithe. If I do, I'm going to have less money, and I'm already struggling. Right. So when you bless me, I'll t I'll tithe. Right. And God says, No, it's the other way around. And sorry, I can wait longer than you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what is he saying? Um, you acted in faith, trust. Right. Okay. Now, on what basis did you did you trust what he said? Trust what he said. Yeah. He said. Now, by the way, if you tithe, I'm going to bless you. Mm -hmm. He says you can test me on this. Uh, so, in a sense, he's saying, you know what? And this is in, in this one particularly. It's. He says, I understand 
the difficulty of this. So I'm going to say throughout Scripture, do not test me. Yeah. And test me is uh, you divide, you provide, and I'll wait and see. Uh, and he says, um, you're going to have to come to a faith of what I have to say is true before I can deliver that. You can't test me because I can't become your God. I can't become, you can't become God. I'm your God. Right. Uh, but in this area, he says, and I know it's difficult. He said, so I tell you what, while you are processing through obedience, try it out. Right. Try it out. Um, and you'll learn trust, which then, by the way, when you learn that, like, oh, wow, look at this. Right. Um, and that is actually going to roll into future things he asks you to do that you have to step out on faith yeah, as well. Because then, and see, it's all, it's all by faith. All of it's by faith, he says, because mm -hmm. without faith, it's what? impossible to please God. Okay, so by definition, every mm -hmm. step of the way is, do you understand my instruction? Do you understand my promise? Are you willing to go? And and see, generally speaking, uh, actually, um, I was even talking to Dan about this, uh, that um, when you hear things or, or believe things or have things, <laughs> and they're not happening, right? the thought is, I, I guess I didn't hear right. Um, and, God, and God says, no, 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 no. You heard right. Don't go that way. He right. said, in your, in your desire to hear and be obedient, come with me and I'll complete it until you believe what I've said. When you believe it, and this remember, this is how it works. You act, interesting enough, every single day, every single action that you do is based on belief. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you get in an automobile, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get in an automobile, and I'm going to drive home. Well, there's something I believe that, yep. <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, the cars on the road are, are not going to, uh, you know, just go anywhere they want to and, right. wind, and wind up crashing into me. Now, by the way, it happens. Accidents happen. Uh, uh, but fundamentally, I believe it's it's, it's going to be safe to drive You're going to get in. You're going to get from point A to point B safely. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I don't every 10 seconds, is it safe? Is it safe? Is it safe? Mm -hmm. I believe it's safe. I go. Mm -hmm. If I didn't believe it's safe, you know, and like for, <laughs> I'll tell you a great little story. Um, uh, we live in Colorado, and uh, we travel up into the mountains, right? Uh, often, so, uh, and I personally, um, I in a sense, I kind of like danger a little bit. Uh, yeah, we know that yeah. about you. Anybody who's heard about yeah. you liking to drive fast, <laughs> um, I like danger, and um, uh, and things don't really tend to. Uh, caused me to go to fear. It's like, yeah, let's try it out. You know? So, so Linda and I, um, we're up in Aspen, Colorado, and uh, it's a very, very uh, steep mountain. And we're in the summertime, and we I rent a uh, four wheel drive, uh huh, uh, a Jeep that's completely open, doesn't even have doors on it. Right, uh, right. So um, we're going up. And uh, the road is just as wide as the wheels. That's it. I, and, I believe I've been on the road you're talking about. Yeah. And then on the, <laughs> uh, on the passenger side, because we're mm -hmm. going up, on the passenger side. There's no barrier either, it's, right? It's, it's, yep. it's three to 500 feet drops. And there's mm -hmm. no barrier. And if you literally go a little bit over, you're gone. I, I know uh, exactly where you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> so uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, let's go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, Linda is is saying, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure <laughs> that this is safe. Right. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'd like to go on this. Um, I'm worried about this. I got. I'm wondering about this. Um, um, I don't have confidence in this. Uh, and <laughs> God, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, we go up, we go up, and basically, um, and this is where I wish I had my earphones. 
I bet she squealed um, the whole she's way. Scream, she's <laughs> screaming the whole way, you know. Uh, but we, you know, I was, damn, we're make, we made it, you know. But, um, well, if I believed it, absolutely. Well, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to behave that way. And of course, if it would have been like, for example, Linda, are you going to drive up? Right. She was, she would say, I'm not doing it because I, I don't believe that it's safe, and I don't feel right. confident in my skills to drive right. it. So no, I am not going to drive that Jeep up that mountain right. because, because I don't believe it. So uh, everything we do is based on belief. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we learn is, uh, am I operating by sight? What I can prove, and by the mm-hmm. way, control, right. or do I trust God who then instructs me go this way mm-hmm. because I know something is best and none better. Right. Um, and so um, your obedience, it's not like, well, uh, every step of the way, I got to make sure that I'm completely 100% convinced. Because by the way, how would we want, you know, like when you when tithing, for example, well, we would want to know exactly how that plays out by you're, formula, by penny. <laughs> well, yeah, and you're a little bit in that who's going to make the first move. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, because, um, well, I'll go if you prove it to me. Right, right. That says I'll prove it to you when you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Uh, I'm even giving you permission to just try it out. Mm-hmm. By the way, in a sense, see, when he says test me, he really says this. Try it out. If it doesn't work, you can go ahead and stop it. Yeah. Okay. Now, I honestly, I think there's so much grace in the fact that that is the one place he invites us to test him, because I do. I people that I've counseled with, I think that is probably one of the like basic tenets of how God grew their faith. Um, was them stepping into that un- unwilling, not unwillingly, but but not ready necessarily, but stepping in on faith because he said, "Test me in this," and that was pivotal in them growing their trust and faith in him that yeah. he is who he says he is. Yeah, yeah, and then you start to learn it that. Um, yeah, and then it applies uh, to so many other places. You know, uh, give me the power, give me the understanding, uh, and you begin. The more you do it, see, the more you trust it. Of mm-hmm. you know, here's my step. That I'm asking you to take, or by the way, don't right. take, or be careful, or stop. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, go go forward. Um, again, I'll give you a, a real simple. We were at a retreat in uh, uh, Europe in uh, uh, Prague, and we were um, uh, every morning. We had rented. A uh, few of us had rented a. So I'm a bike rider. So we love, if we're in a particular place that we could do that, well, we went bikes and we, and we go. We get up like at 5.30 in the morning and go, and go bike riding. So um, we do. Uh, and there's, there's, you come out of the hotel, uh, there's a, a driveway, we come out and then we go on the road. Uh, and at 5.30 in the morning, there's no cars. Right. So yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so we do that day after day after day. Uh, every day, no cars. So um, uh, I'm... Uh, coming up, uh, and I'm about ready to go on the road and turn right, uh, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, uh, look left and stop. And I'm going, and I look left, and there's a car speeding probably 60 miles an hour Mm. coming up this road, and if I'd have gone out there, adios. Uh, Wow. And uh, and so I... I (laughs) I, I braked immediately, uh, and I braked immediately, and of course he passed us by, and of course I, I fly over the handlebars. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> onto the street, and I had, I had you know, uh, I had blood on my uh, uh, legs and stuff, and, you know, the guy that was with me said, you know, we should go in, ah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, well, I'll take care of it later. You know, we went out, and I had blood all over me, but it didn't matter, but it was, it was that, that trust, that learning of, of uh, letting him direct you and being obedient really and even simple things like that of what I'm doing is guiding you into the very, very best. And when you start to realize that obedience is the place of joy, not the place of burden. Right. Right. Uh, And that's what we're trying to say here is that 
Um, is it is it like I have to get it all settled? No, because it's going to be, and I think what you brought up is really critical, is it always is going to be a step of faith. Right. That um, I'm not sure, but I'm going to follow it because I trust you. Exactly. And based, and based on what you've said. Uh, and so we can, uh, let's actually look at a couple verses here that help us with this. Uh, go to uh, Deuteronomy 12, 28 which actually is a cool verse that actually speaks to what you just said. Oh, excellent. All right. Deuteronomy 12, 28 says, Observe and obey all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever, when you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. Yeah. Uh, Observe, it says, uh, pay attention, Mm -hmm. uh, listen, uh, have a heart to follow, uh, what the words... Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is why, you know, even in the Old Testament, you know, everybody would say, well, what there were a bunch of laws is, yeah, but it was God speaking. Here's my instruction for you now. Uh, right. And the word, the, the word words in the Old Testament uh, is dabar, a Hebrew. It's similar to rhema. Uh, it's mm-hmm. let, me, okay. let me speak these words to you. Okay. you. You observe them, keep them. If you do, he says what? going to go well with you hey, and your children <laughs> it's going to go well with you uh and because of that um why would you not okay right. now think about it why is it going to go well with you because you're stepping into what his best is what he's asking you to do he's already gone before it he's preparing a way and you're just joining him where he's already working yeah and this goes back to uh the the essence of the covenant i <laughs> i'm going to give you my very very best i'm going to bless you i can make things happen um, and as you trust that, your heart goes from duty or you're controlling me to following to get to the place where he has already uh, ordained is the place he can deliver this thing because it's right. going to go well with you. Uh, and the word there That's is funny. it's going to be pleasing, pleasant, joyful. Uh, uh, everything about it is going to be spectacular. You know, why would you not? Um, yeah. and that's and that's why we're trying to encourage people about to receive the covenant it's walking with him and following him being obedient to what he says it reminds me as you're talking about this even you know I've shared before um, how I spent time on do loss yeah and again when you look at that word do loss you know in the New Testament you see it throughout and it's bond servant yeah. and you can think of something being oppressive and controlled or you can look at the actual definition of it and a bond servant was actually usually voluntary right they chose to step into that role. Yeah. That was what usually defined a bond servant. Chose to step into that role because of their loyalty and trust in the person ahead of them and what they were doing. Right. And so I think that is a shift we need to picture when we're talking about obedience. Is it's not a picture of control. It's us voluntarily stepping into a trusting relationship with the one who is faithful. Yeah. So we'll yeah. um, uh, we'll pick this up again next week. Uh, this whole aspect of obedience and what he actually tells us about uh, the it's actually Im- interesting enough. Uh, we're going to talk next time about the invitation of it. Uh, mm. It's um, it's all about choice. Do you have a heart to go? If right. you have a heart to go, you're going to receive what I what I promise you. So obedience is is really down at the level of I'll go with you. Uh, until I get the faith, which, by the way, he says, I'll give you the faith to believe it. Mm -hmm. And then you can move to what? Get to the place that I have. So it's going to go well for you. So we'll we'll pick this up uh, next week. Uh, Very cool. uh, Everybody have a great night. Looking forward uh, to it. uh, A great uh, night, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. With Guest Thursday? Yes. Are we up to Guest Guest Thursday Thursday now? Yes. (laughs) All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining us. All right. See you soon. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.